we are not actually sponsored in this video, unfortunately. No, I'd love to not. get I'd love to get more free tech equipment. That would be pretty cool. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, hit us up, Samsung. Hit us up, Galaxy. <laughs> But what I am getting for free are new baseball hats. What do you think, hey, Jason? Tampa Bay. I love it. I love it. So you knew it was looking? Tampa Bay. Okay. Come on, man. I, I understand. Yeah, I know Major League Baseball is on the is on the outs, <laughs> but I understand it. I mean, nobody. Okay. Cool. I thought you had told me that you're not like a big Major League Baseball fan, but you do that know the team. Yeah, them. I can know. Oh, that one I can pretty I can put two and two together. T and B. <laughs> that sounds like Tampa Bay to me. So that's no. true. I, you know, I know this is off the topic, but um, feel free to tell me in the comments why do baseball teams always seem to have letters or initials on their hats rather than a logo or an emblem? Like, it seems like most of them are they're the letters. Why do they do that? I don't know. <laughs> So I should have really uh, not been sharing this screen while we're talking about all these different subjects. What we're really going to be talking about in this video is what you see up here. Uh, I've talked about uh, Grace Life Church with Pastor mm -hmm. James Coates, but this was a um, situation that we heard about just yesterday. Grace Life Church shuttered by authorities after months of flouting COVID-19 rules, and that is a fence that the authorities put to block wow. off the church for people cannot actually go into the church building. So we're going to be talking about Canada tonight. So I was tempted to wear my Toronto Blue Jays hat. Yeah. Sorry, Linda, I didn't wear that, but this is my newest one. And I wanted to, I wanted to uh, honor the person who sent me this. So I'm wearing this one. Man. But we're going to talk about Canada tonight. There's another pastor I highlighted too, Pastor mm -hmm. Pulowski, I think is his name. Yeah, And uh, he had police come to his service uh, on uh, Easter weekend. I think it was a Saturday and he just kicked the police out. He told them, <laughs> he told them they couldn't be there without a warrant. So uh, he had a, he had an interesting approach. So I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, to hearing what you have to say, wow. say about some of these things, Jason. Man. All right. So let's, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm actually saddened. I'm, I'm sad. I know, um, and I'm, I'm going to meter my conversation today, Tim, speaking to those persons who are in support of Grace Life and Dr. Pal uh, Pastor Palausi and other churches that are remaining open. If you don't feel that churches should stay open, if you feel like they should be all closed, most of my conversation is not going to be geared towards you today. Um, you're welcome to hit me up in the comment section, jason at jwit.com. You're welcome to email me. We can talk about it if you feel like we should scuttle all churches and, and just stay in the house. That's fine. But most of my conversation is going to be, um, this is going to be um, um, just speaking to those persons that, that feel like me, that, that are in support of James Coates and his, um, his family, the Grace Life family, Dr. Plowsy. Uh, if, if MacArthur pops up in the conversation, anything like that, I'm speaking to those persons today. Mm. Okay, so um, I'm going to put links to any articles that we show in this video, just so people can research for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly what we're encouraging is for people to uh, just look at the information and, and then people can assess for themselves uh, how, how they would approach the matter. And, and I know COVID, the whole situation has brought up a lot of strong emotion. Yes. Uh, and I, I get a lot of comments on both sides when I talk about the COVID situation. And with situations like this with uh, churches, it, it definitely raises a lot of uh, emotion. So we've got this one. And uh, we mentioned, I'll try to pull up this other article here. Uh, That's the where there is, yes, with, uh, with Arthur Pulowski, pastor in, uh, I think it's Calgary, up in Canada, and uh, he does have a video on YouTube, and and I showed clips of it. I didn't show the whole thing. I mean, he was very harsh when he kicked these police out. But basically, what happened is he he approached them and said, "You need to get out." And they tried to keep talking to him, and he said, "You know, you're not supposed to be here without a warrant. We're not talking. Get out." And they wouldn't get out. 
right away. So he had to keep uh, getting more and more forceful. And eventually he just kind of, kind of exploded on them. I think he was calling them Nazis. Um, and, uh, you know, I uh, forget what else he called them, but uh, he, he had some pretty, Gustavo. uh, Gustavo. <laughs> yeah, he did. He may have said something like that. He said, uh, it says it in the yeah. second paragraph. Oh, does in it? The video he calls the Nazis and Gestapo for coming in. Yep. Oh yeah, you're right. He yeah. He did. Terms. He must've said he Gestapo at some point. Uh, yeah. So, I, I talked about his background. He's he's originally from Poland back when it was under mm -hmm. communist rule. And so he had a lot of, um, I'm sure, trauma as a child, uh, seeing what happened in his country, his home country. And so I think, I think what was happening with him is he was really speaking out of, you, know, you could call it post-traumatic stress disorder, if you will. You know, if you've grown up in an oppressive regime, regime yes. it's it's going to really affect your life. And so when he sees police coming into his church without a warrant, and he felt they were being very intimidating by by showing up there, uh, you know, he, he had a strong emotional reaction. So that's some of the backstory to him. So that's basically an overview. Um, I want to give you, Jason, time to, to share some reactions that you had and uh, again, we're focusing a lot on Canada because that's where these stories are coming from. Even though you mm -hmm. and I live in the United States, where we don't we don't have a lot of controversy here, oh, no. especially where you live in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh my you know, God. it's not it's, like there's any controversy down there. It is peace and rainbows, man. Sunshine and rainbows <laughs> here in Georgia, man. Everything's great, man. This, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> it's utopia. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, so, yeah, go ahead. So going back to James Coates and even this one right here, I don't know because, and, and I love it. There's been some great conversation in the comment section. Please continue, especially if you're in Canada, because I don't understand the the geography of Canada, nonetheless, the the uh, the government system. So you're 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 shedding light for all of us. Um, but what I so what I do know is. Some of the facts that I pulled up, and I, I believe I even showed it, shared it with you earlier today, Tim, was I guess what's called the uh, what, whatever their health department's called, their their equivalent of the CDC. Okay, um, you want me and, to pull up the stats there? Yeah, just because this I think is this what, is what what I saw at least. Or are you go. talking about? No, nope, that's it. That's exactly yep. it. So when I pulled this up to look, I'm like, well, clearly Edmonton should be. A dumpster fire. I mean, it should be, I mean, they should be, as I like to say, stacking them up like lasagna in the streets. Mm. And that's not what we're seeing here. So I, I I wonder about the the severity of this lockdown and why it is so severe. And it doesn't seem to line up with first of all, the, the stats. A lot of people like to say, you know, look at the, the science, follow the science, okay. Well, here's the, the 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 science, and this is from them. Not it's not me coming up with. It's not some right wing conspiracy theorist, and it just doesn't seem to line up with this this intense lockdown that you can't be in church for an hour and a half. Grace um, Grace Life services are are two hours tops, so we're not talking about some over you know some multi hour event. It's only two hours. And most of the time they're sitting there listening rather than, yes, they are singing, but most of the time they're actually participating in, in hearing a sermon. James, sermons are not that long. I don't know about um, Pastor Pulowski. I don't know. I'm going to go on a limb and say that he's not having eight hour long services. So I'm going to, I might be taking a stab, but I, I, I'm, I feel sorry that the, the church is being vilified as if they're just so reckless, as if they're just so, they just want to kill people and all this stuff that you read and you hear. And you're like, the numbers don't line up with what you're saying again. So, okay, so what? They, they, and I even read last week, they tried to, because there was an outbreak of COVID-19 at a school, they tried to pin it on, on Grace Life, but they, they mm -hmm. skipped over all of these businesses in order to do that. It was like five miles away, but there's like several churches and um, a couple other businesses between the school and no, none of the kids actually go 
or have any kind of tie-in with Grace Life, but they try to pin it on Grace Life. Like, come on, man. Like this, this is the part that becomes frustrating and sad to see because at the end of the day, if you go back and listen to James Coates' sermon, the last sermon he gave before he was arrested, he's giving, he's, he's laying out his case for why he believes church should still be open and that church is essential and that the government has no interaction with that. Now, somebody's going to immediately say, well, what if they were doing something illegal? Well, they're not. That's the problem. They're not. Now, if they were, then call the police and have them arrested for doing something illegal. There's nothing illegal that they're currently doing. Because someone's made an a, as far as I know, and again, my name is Jason. I, I only play a lawyer here on the Tim Frisch, Frisch perspective. So I'm not a lawyer. But nowhere have I seen that they're, they're, there's an actual law that they're breaking. It's these mandates and these, these, for lack of a better term, executive orders that are being pushed out that they're, they're, they're shunning. Hence why, going back to um, Pastor Pulaski, why he was able to tell them to hit the road. Because they didn't have a warrant because they did not they had not done the due diligence of getting a warrant to be on the property, to be inspecting, so to speak. You don't have the right to do that. So just in my opening salvo, I'm, I'm sad to see because I see the church as being extremely essential, especially in the world that we're currently living in, where there's so much, there's so that everybody's on nerve, everybody's on edge, and they need a way to deal with that. And the gospel is that message. The gospel is, is the way to do that. But Jason, but Jason, they can do church uh, less capacity, 25% capacity. They can do Zoom church. Um, what other things are they, are they writing in it? Um, oh, they don't have to do it in a building. They can do it in a field. I think that's probably what somebody just typed right there. All those things are true. But if you are a parent and you are a parent that was forced to keep your kids at home all of 2020, you know, and I know, and everybody else knows, that is not good quality teaching that those kids got. And I don't care how good a teacher you had. You know your child did not do his or her best sitting in front of a screen. You know that. I don't care if the teacher was phenomenal. I don't care if the teacher was teacher of the millennium. You know, like I know, that your kid was goofing off Roadblocking, uh, um, what's that? Uh, uh, Fortniteing while they were in math. You know that. So if your kid is not learning substantively or, or, or substantively while watching Zoom, and that's just education, that's just learning, knowledge. How are you? Are you honestly saying that the the the, the church can be substituted with uh, a screen? And I'll just give you my last reason why that doesn't work. Christian television. We've had Christian television for years, decades. How's that been working for us? Thank you. So my point is, church is essential and physical face-to-face -face church, is, I'm sorry, is extremely important. So to, to see Canada doing literally everything they can to unplug the remedy for their people. I don't know what the, the mental state of is in Canada. I don't know what the, the anxiety level is, but I can pretty much guesstimate that it's probably much higher than it was in 2018. But they seem to be doing everything possible to ruin that. And yet, yes, I understand they could do reduced capacity. But my question is why? There is, if again, if the numbers don't line up, why do they need to do reduce capacity? And I believe that's exactly what James Coates and his eldership, that's what um, I'm sure if I talk to Arthur Pulaski, that's probably the same thing. Why? Why do I need to have, if I could have 100 people in my church, why, sh why should I only have 25? Because why? Because again, the numbers don't show up. The numbers don't help your case. The numbers actually make the point that Okay, send these people to church. Um, that, that's just, I don't know if that's my opening salvo, but I, I just, I, I'm, I'm extremely disappointed 
to see this. And I want to encourage those who do believe that church is essential. Open up your church. Go to church. Go to church Sunday. Um, not because James Coates, not because of Pulaski, definitely not because it's Yahoo down in Atlanta. But go to church because you want to worship God with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Go. Go. Just go. Now, however, your if your church is doing um, reduced capacity, if your church is doing parking lot church, if your church is doing just come, come as you are without one plea, go to church. Go. And, and, and fellowship and, and worship God with your brothers and sisters in Christ. All right, that's my. Okay, right. well, you've heard the message from Jason. Go to church this week. <laughs> you know, there's there's so much to say with this, and and a lot of it, you know, has been discussed. But I but I think it's it's worth saying. Nobody is forcing anyone to to go to a service. So if someone has a very vulnerable situation, they don't have to go. Um, you know, no one's mandating what we're talking about. I think what you're talking about is a person making a choice for themselves based on their own health situation, as well as their own conviction. And I hear that in, in you, Jason, it's a conviction. I think it shows too that your experience of church and the way you look at church plays into this so much. And I hear that from you as well. Uh, you, you've experienced church in a very personal way. Uh, and I know people that go to James Coates Church, Grace Life. Church is like family to them, not just in the theory. Of, you know, we talk about yeah. church being family, like the family of God, but actually they get together on Sundays and uh, a lot of churches eat together. You know, the it's a another, family time. Yeah. One another. If you go back to Acts chapter two, and, and this, they're doing Acts yeah. and, and they're doing that. And it's not the same. I mean, one day I pray that I'll be able to shake your hand, Tim, and meet you face to face and we can laugh and talk it up. To try but here. <laughs> we can try, but it's, it's going to be weird. Not the same. But not the same. But no, like, that's not the same. I want to, I, I, I was talking with one of my coworkers because my job is 100% remote. And I said, think about it. We don't know how tall one another are. <laughs> and they literally were like, you know what? We don't know. Like, everybody's the same size in Zoom. Like how I don't know how tall Tim is. Now that's a small little detail. But you didn't know I, you didn't know I was six foot five. But you could I I can't argue. <laughs> I actually seen a picture. Of I'm that. not. Like, well, <laughs> <laughs> it might be inverse, but I. <laughs> but my point is like like the, being in each other's presence, like being able to like to to be around one another, and not just because oh because we support the same. Um, baseball team or because we work in the same place but because we worship god together I, i'm sorry i'm sorry I, I i i my heart breaks for well my heart breaks for canada and this this these people that are trying to be so harsh to grace life and even um uh um pastor Pulowski, i know that it's not all of canada so i don't when i say canada i'm just being in the general sense, I know people like to correct me that it's not all the Canadians. You're right. I totally understand. I'm just talking about Canadians that have made this decision. I don't, I'm, and the cat's name is Jason of all ways, Jason Kelly, or whatever his name is. Uh, man, come on, let me get a better name. But no, I think it's, it's important. And I, I just, I, I will never not believe that being able to worship with your brothers and sisters in a, it, being respectful, of course. If Tim has some kind of um, health issue or Tim doesn't feel comfortable, then he, he'll, he'll be a Zoom family member. But I mean, we have members at our church that have been Zooming for quite some time. Um, and they're older, they're elderly, and um, they've started to come back. I saw lots of them last week during Resurrection Sunday. And it, it just seems like, I, I just hate to see that what Canada needs is more James Coates, church being open, worshiping God, one anothering with their community. Because I have, I don't know anyone personally at Grace Life, but everything I've read does support what you just said, Tim. That these people are very connected with one another. They're one anothering that everybody likes to talk about. They're loving their neighbor. They're being mindful of their neighbors and such like that. And the same thing I would assume with, with uh, Arthur Pulowski. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I thought that uh, James Coates, you know, took a pretty strong stand, and, and then I saw Arter Prolaski and the way he handled it. I mean, you talk about a, a strong stand making a statement. <laughs> he made a statement. He punctuated. Yeah, he but, did. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know, man. I, I want to like get into some a little bit of tin foil here. Okay. The the article, the, like the, the police report going to uh, um, Pulaski's church, they weren't being mm -hmm. honest. <laughs> they weren't being honest. They said that there was clearly one officer and the rest were um health health services you clearly see there's multiple police officers there <laughs> like, yeah it said it multiple. sent a police a police officer to assist representatives from aahs but when you look at the video you actually see multiple police like yeah like, yeah i was like see that, that doesn't help your case that you're being honest no. that, that makes it sound like what you were trying to intimidate those people like you, mm. you were sending in a, a team of police to, I mean, who, one officer, I got you, but, but there's, there's clearly three officers there and maybe more, I don't know, but there's three officers there. And the fact that he knew uh, is it, just, it stands out to me also that he knew get out of here without, because you don't have a warrant. So when my girl right here starts to try to talk to him, somebody pointed out in the, uh, somebody pointed out earlier that it's like, she's trying to stall. And maybe get some him to say something yeah. that they can yeah. stay for. He's like, you don't talk to me. If you notice, he said, don't talk to me. Yeah. You don't he wouldn't have even let her talk. Yeah. He wouldn't let her talk, right? So again, like, it's, like, why are we going? You're doing all of this, and we're not even discussing. We've not even discussed. Are you treating other businesses like this? We haven't even discussed that. So I, I know somebody's gonna somebody's typing it right now. In the, in the comment section, but are they treating other businesses like, like this? Like again, and, and I see the, the I, I don't care. You can tell me about grocery stores. You can tell me about skating rinks. You can tell me about tattoo parlors. You're not gonna convince me that this is even on the same plane. So I'm sorry, church is much more essential than all of those things. So if you're not shutting down those other things, if you are shutting down those other things, whatever, church is still more essential. Jason at jaywit.com. <laughs> yeah, you said you were not going to be pandering at all to people that don't agree with James Coates. And clearly you're you're living up to what you said right at the beginning. Well, I'm, I mean, because <laughs> I know there's going to be some people that disagree. I don't, and yeah. that's fine. I don't, and you know what? I don't, I'm not intimidated by you disagreeing. That's fine. Yeah. You can disagree. I would like you to chapter and verse your disagreement. I would like you to bring me some biblical reasoning because hmm. I don't want to argue from a secular standpoint. Because again, if we just make church the same thing as Walmart and Target and the skating rink, well, yeah, shut them all down. Okay, yes, you're right, but it's not the same. So let's put it let's put it back in its proper place. So I know somebody's mm -hmm. going to have a disagreement, and I'm not mad about that. I'm not I'm not afraid mm -hmm. of that. I just want you to be consistent and also be be biblical in your response. In your response, if again, they're not stacking people up like lasagna. In, in the streets. So where is all of this? You can't say that uh, Grace Life is is being um, is, is killing people. You can't say that. Hmm. But you, I've seen the comment. People are saying that um, you can't say it because it's not happening. So don't use that. So let's come up. We're gonna be adult. Let's come up with some some better. Okay, fine. They're shirking off the government. You know that you can the government uh, mandates. No problem. Their argument is that those are not legal. Can you show me that those are legal? <laughs> and you can't go back and say people are dying because they're not stacking them up like lasagna in the street. Um, the other thing I pulled up, um, I was trying to find, and I don't think I did the best job, was trying to find other reasons people were dying in um, Canada. And I just thought it was interesting that um, I guess they kind of, I can't think of a better word, they kind of budget for deaths every year, like certain amount of people that die every week, every month, every year. Um, and then they can determine if there's an excessive amount of people dying every year. So I was looking for like things like car crashes. Like how many people died in car crashes uh, last year in Canada mm. or, you know, or of any other kind of accident? 
I couldn't find it. So this one, this article was interesting. And of course, Tim, you'll tag it in, a, in the yeah. description. But truly, and we've, we've talked about it and discussed it earlier, which was um, other reasons why, you know, other ramifications of the lockdown, like anxiety and loneliness and such like that. And that plays a big role into this number of the 10,000, Canada's record 10,000 deaths um, in 2020, a big part of it. But throughout this article, they, they could not find, they could not seem to convince anybody that the, the amount of people that died was that much more than would have died last year and that that many more died simply because of COVID. And I just think that's something we got to consider. So I'm not saying that it's not a, a real thing, not saying we don't, we're not, we shouldn't be cautious and we shouldn't be take precautions. But at the end of the day, we can't use these as excuses to shut church down, which is again, what we've been called to do. We've been told to do. And I think we said in a previous show, I, there's no way in the world you can convince me that Paul in this day and age would have said, follow me as I zoom church Christ. And I just don't believe it. Yeah, I think a lot of what we're talking about here has to do with um, fear and, and people obviously in our culture have a lot of fear. There's a almost an exorbitant fear, uh, so much anxiety out there. And so COVID-19 kind of hit on the scene in, a, in an environment where there was already so much fear. But I, I agree with you. I, I'm always trying to get back to what do the actual numbers tell us? And I think to be fair to a church, even like Grace Life, I get it. They are pushing back in ways that they feel the government is overreaching. And some people don't agree with that. The, the, the biblical argument, uh, you know, some people will use is, is Romans 13. Um, but, but still, you know, let's set all that aside for a second. And let's just look at, is Grace Life actually posing a health threat? Is there any evidence of that? And to be fair, I agree with you. I don't think there's any evidence of that. And I know that if the church started to have an outbreak, they would be considerate. They, they wouldn't say, hey, we're starting to have COVID, spread it all over the place. They, they would take precautions. And, 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 and we already see this because these people have been one anothering with each other. Like this is a, this is a, a family community. They've been, they've been supporting one another. If somebody does, I, again, I, I, I refuse to believe that they would just be like, oh, well, someone's got COVID. Let's come on and have a COVID party. I just don't believe that. And there's no reason to believe that. Now, again, you, you touched on fear, which I do think is a real thing. Everybody has some level of fear or has some kind of uh, fear tolerance, so to speak. Mm. But I, I think some of us have a greater fear tolerance. Like, man, I ain't worried about nothing. I'm going out here. I'm doing my life. Some people have less fear tolerance. That's perfectly fine. Allow, and, and allow me to make my decision just like I allow you to make your decision. I'm, I'm sorry. And if you have a, a rebuttal to that, show me, just convince the person. Just convince them. Like, you see the stack of lasagna out here? Those are bodies. That, 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 then you need to stay your butt in the house. Oh, hey, I got you. I got you. But you can't convince people of this. I, I mean, we, we've, we've seen the, the argument that, I know we've seen it before. Um, they told us six months ago that people who didn't wear masks would all be dead. still here so it, it again like so you can't use that anymore <laughs> well in another six months it's been a year already come on let's let it go if you're fearful that's okay but allow people to go to church and, and live there and, and at least spiritually get some kind of nourishment some kind of um some kind of uh, um built be, be built up spiritually at least so that they're not anxious, so they can't, they're not lonely, so they're not sitting here feeling, woe is me. Because I mean, otherwise, how, how people, how do you really, what, what's your game plan for people physically actually getting better if they're not spiritually getting better? Like, what, what is that, the actual game plan? I, I said I wasn't gonna speak to people who disagreed with me, but I wouldn't mind in the comment section. What is your, what is your actual, if, if, what I'm doing, going to church on Wednesdays and Sundays, worshiping God, 
with, and praying with my church family and my family is no bueno. What is your solution when, when this is all over with? How, how, how do you see my, my daughters who are teenagers? Um, you know, so they got their, their, their whole, that whole teenager thing. Pray for me. Pray for your boy. Um, they got that whole thing. What's your solution for them to grow spiritually? At, at, if, if what I'm doing is not acceptable and what I'm doing is, is dangerous and terrible. Um, a famous pastor here in Atlanta said he's not going to open up his church until basically until Fauci says it's okay for him to open up his church. And now he does have parking lot church and, and that and the Zoom church, but meeting in, in some kind of building, he's not going to do that until the CDC says it's okay. So, wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I, wow, I don't know who that's interesting right there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, all right. Yeah, I I really, um, I, I you know, getting back to like that pastor who uh, was from Poland, Pulowski, Pastor mm -hmm. Pulowski, and, you know, he's, he's kind of the, almost an extreme of what some people, when they criticize Christians, and they say, uh, Christ, Christians need to be submissive to the government, and you look at Pastor Pulowski, you know, he, he, he doesn't seem very submissive. And I, I, I get that. I actually, you know, there's a part of me that says, yeah, he's being harsh. But I think there's a really, you know, very difficult question that we have to answer as Christians and, and, um, and, and we're struggling with it. But does there ever come a point where, you know, for, for the good of others, we have to take a stand um, because, and, and here, uh, here's what I wanted to say about that. He actually saw in his growing up pastors and priests taken and killed. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you can see where he's coming from here. Now, I guess the argument would be, well, we should be willing to die. You know, we should be willing to, you know, and, and I get that we, we certainly, um, we certainly understand as Christians that it may come to that at times where, where, you know, our lives are sacrificed but I think as, as people who are trying to do good for others, government is something instituted by God, but actually governments themselves are under God's rule, Yes. and governments are established. They, they're not eternal. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's, I think, something that we have to throw into the conversation. We won't be able to get to it tonight, but I do think we should try to be honoring to authority. And we should be submissive. However, at, at some point, you know, let's take a country like Germany when, when the Nazis took over. I think there was a valid case for our government, because we had been attacked, <laughs> to, to join that war effort and to fight against the Nazis. So that's a government, one government system fighting against another government system because they're vying for power. Right. And so ultimately, this is part of the world we live in. It is a sin-infested world. It's not perfect. And I agree. I get what a lot of people are saying. We should try to be submissive. But I also see where that pastor is coming from. Uh, because he's trying to look out for the good of others. He sees what can happen when a government becomes oppressive. There's, there's nothing in Scripture that, and, and please feel free, people, chapter and verse me. I see nothing in scripture that says we should not try to steer, if we can help steer the ship back on course, then we should not make an attempt to steer the ship back on course. If we see um, Pulowski has, he knows what it's like. He knows how he's seen it happen. So it's not just me and you theorizing it, or I read it in a book, he's actually seen it. So if he sees police officers and um, health service people in his, in his church, and he knows how this is going to pan out. And he also has a history with, with the police. So he's not the first time on the Apple card. Whereas, you know, James Coates, as far as we know, this is all relatively new. His interactions with the government is in 2020 or 2021. It's nothing. He, has, he doesn't have a decade long like Pulowski. So the point is, He's seen it. So he knows what he's talking about. And 
I don't know if we can support the idea like, oh, we just let it go. We just let whatever happened happen and we'll just, we're, we're going to be trusting Jesus. Yeah, we should. But on the same note, we, we should be involved in um, helping our neighbors. So following this logic, then we should not, we should not, um, there would be no hospitals. There'd be no orphanages. There'd be nothing following the logic of just let, let it go and we'll just mm. you see in the sweet by and by. That's not biblical at all. We, we are supposed to speak out against injustices. We're supposed to speak out against wrongs. And this one is a wrong done by our government. Now we still submit, and I, I point again to James Coates. He stood right there in that pulpit and said, I'm going to do what's right. And I know that there will be consequences for these actions. And that's why he left his pulpit and walked into the police station and got arrested. <laughs> he could have been on the lam. He could have stayed you know, locked in his church as a sanctuary church. He could have did a whole bunch of things, but he didn't do those things. He recognized that there are consequences, but that doesn't mean I don't do what I'm supposed to do. Let's go check out that Daniel. Yeah, I want to say one other thing, too, about this. Um, the governments we live under are, uh, you know, like ours in America, of the people, by the people, for the people. It's a certain type of government that we've established. And our government is not a dictatorship. Uh, it, it, it's supposed to actually function, function under a system of laws. So even the government needs to be lawful. And one of the things that was very rightly pointed out, I think, with Pastor Pulaski's situation is, it looks as if the government is actually violating the law by the way it's handling things. And I think yes. you pointed that out earlier that these churches aren't necessarily breaking a clear cut law. They're, mm. they're just not going, uh, they're, they're not following health orders, but we've seen this in the United States. There are certain churches that didn't do what the mandate said. And ultimately the court said the churches have freedom. So yeah. Some people try to say it's about submitting to government, but part of our government is our laws and our court system. And the courts and, have and, actually backed up churches. In and that's cases. a beautiful point, because I do think people think like, oh, when I say the like the trump card is submit to government, you know, and they quote Romans and say submit to government. Um, that's not just one person. Yes. That's not just that's just not some talking in on TV or, or Fauci or anybody like that. Right. It is a system of government that has to be proper protocol so the government is 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 under the laws which are ultimately under god but the government actually is supposed to be lawful <laughs> it's supposed to be lawful and, and sadly in some instances we see them being lawless but mm -hmm. um um and, and i can hear it i got discombobulated by the typing in the comment section but <laughs> I can hear them already. So Jason at jwit.com, feel free to email me. That's right. Um, Take all complaints to Jason. <laughs> there you go, man. But, but we have to be mindful. And again, I'm only speaking, you know what? I'm, I'm back out. I'm going to speak again to persons who, who believe that. Go to church on Sunday. Go. Go to church and worship God and, and, and connect with your, your brothers and sisters, um, however you feel comfortable doing that with a mask, with gloves, or just be free. But go to church and worship with your brothers and sisters. They need to see you, they, and you need to see them. And you don't want to see them on the little screen. You're sick of it just like I'm sick of it. Go worship with your brothers and sisters um, and, 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 and sing to God. Pray with your, with your, with your congregation, with your families, and, and, and just be obedient to God. You're not obedient to Jason. You're not obedient to Tim. You're not obedient to... Uh, the premier in Canada, the president or the pseudo president here in America. Um, it, but, but be obedient to God and, and let the chips fall where they may, but just go worship God and, and in person. So miss me with the whole, I'm going to worship God on Zoom. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people that want to go. Go worship God. Mm. So, um, that, that's good. And I, I think uh, we're going to we're going to wind the conversation down. I also want to reiterate something I've said, which is, uh, you know, even in a case like Grace Life, they can shut down their building, but they can't shut down the church. The mm -hmm. church is the people of God and Grace Life. Uh, we're going to pray, pray for them. Obviously, we're going to all be, uh, you know, continuing to, to uphold them in prayer. I'm sure God will provide in, in amazing ways. 
Uh, but regardless of what happens, I'm sure that church is going to continue to one another, as you were talking about, and continue to be the church. And uh, no government ultimately can control the church. Jesus is building his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Or them raggedy fences that they put around Grace Life. But, um... That's true. The gates of Canada, <laughs> AHS, are not even as strong as the gates of hell. Not right? Even a little bit. <laughs> okay, two things I want to point out. Um, I did read that someone has given Grace Life a, um, a facility to mm -hmm. worship on Sunday, so they have somewhere to go on Sunday. Um, and I want to um, just chime in. There was a YouTuber that made a great point that every church in, in Canada should be open on Sunday. If you think about it, if you think about it, the premier and the government system, I'm sorry, I don't know what, I don't know what the proper delineation is, the governor of that area thinks that a ch church being open justifies the manpower to have 24 hour surveillance of a church building. There's no crimes going on in Albert. There's nothing that y'all could be doing in, in Edmonton that is, uh, is, is, there's no speeding, there's no crimes, there's no murders, no robberies, nothing. Really? That's, that's well, all Jason, you Jason, it's not like America, you know. It's they, not they like you're in Georgia. We are, <laughs> we don't need, we can send you some extra police. Our police don't do anything here. We can, we can send you some police. Yeah, I was stop. thinking we probably have a lot more crime, you know, here than, really than Edmonton. <laughs> hey, let me know down in the comment section. Maybe they don't, maybe they have no crime. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure they I, do. I know very little about Canada. Uh, but now I do want to know more. I do, I do want to understand it more because I don't feel like, it, you know, being stateside, we do kind of look at things and kind of impose American ideas mm. or American thought process on it. And I don't know. Like, again, I've mm. said it now multiple times. I don't understand Canadian government fully. So feel free, Jason at jwit.com. You can give me a civics lesson. I'm glad I'm 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 willing to learn. But we can we can try to bring on a Canadian sometime to to fill us in. But I have yeah. heard that I've heard from Canadians that their government is supposed to be upholding certain rights just like ours is. Yes. Yeah, so I've I think well. we're on the we're on the right track in what we're saying here. And I know a lot of can Canadians would agree with what we're saying. I think I was just saying, like, I don't understand the uh, the food chain, like you know. True what they're called yeah I don't, I don't think they have a president so what i don't know it's a i don't know what's called I think, so those kind of things like that i would love to know more about and then also what is there you know as it relates to covid19 what's their protocols like where are they in that i know all the canadians right now are typing in all the all the oh names of their government please put it in a chart so we know who's on top yes, and yes, you know, yes. who's next if you could put some names next to them, that would help. I have heard some of their government official names, but yeah, when you're not from a country, it's it's a little confusing, the terminology. And it's, All right. it's also, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to just, uh, you know, like I said, we're going to wind our conversation down, but did you have anything else? Oh, no, I appreciate you all. Thank you all very much for tuning in every, every week and uh, shooting this out with me and Tim, helping us uh, expand ourselves and get a good, some good nerdy content. I really appreciate you adding to the nerdy content and, and you, you add just a little smidge of opinion, you know, it's, it's, it's I, I almost like, bit. it's almost like you have an opinion a little a bit, you know, glass <laughs> so um, I, there was one viewer who said in the comments that they like to watch us when they exercise on the treadmill. So I hope whoever that viewer is, is having a great exercise oh, session man as a result of our conversation. Maybe you've said some things we've said have really gotten them riled up and it's helping them, you know, I'm, work on that treadmill burn, more. I hope they burn a hundred extra calories. Listen to me rant. I hope they do. But I also hope <laughs> I think, they go to church I think they like Sunday. what you have to say. Yeah. I think they like I it. I love it. I hope they go to church on Sunday and burn an extra couple hundred. And they might need to burn a couple of extra hundred for me, but that's a whole other <laughs> conversation. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a great conversation. It showed, uh, you know, definitely some of our ignorance of, of Canada. So we'll have to try to get, uh, you know, my friend Dwayne Green has been on this channel and he is from Canada. So maybe we could get oh. him to join us and he I could give it. us the lowdown on all the Canadian terminology of government officials. I love him. I love <laughs> Thank it. you so much, it. Jason. Hey, you got it, Tim. Take care.
Have a good Grace night. Grace and peace. Bye. Bye.